Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be taking an object from Illustrator and dropping it into Photoshop as a smart object. Let's jump in and see why this is so beneficial. So here I am in Photoshop and I've got this image that I've got from Photolia, the stock image website. There should be details of the image somewhere on the screen. And what I'd like to do is add some text to this, but the text effect that I'm going for isn't available in Photoshop, but it is available in Illustrator. So I'm gonna jump over there and create it in Illustrator. So over we go, and I'm going to create a new file, file and new, and I'm gonna keep this as they already are. I'm gonna create an A4 document, um, and I'm gonna do it landscape and click OK. At this point, it's not really that important. Now, if you're new to Illustrator, this is going to look slightly familiar, but different, and I'll try and point out some of the differences straight away. So let's go and get the text tool, and I'm gonna click down to start typing. And I'm gonna type out uh, up and at them, perhaps up and at them. There we go. And I'm gonna highlight all this text because I want to change the font. I change it right all the way up. I have one here called American Captain, I think it's called, which will do this really well. There we go. And then I'm gonna make this nice and big. And I can stretch this out using what we as Photoshop users may call the Move tool, but in Illustrator, it's called the Selection tool. So let's click on that. And then you can see that I can just drag this out to the size that I want. There we go. Now I'm gonna come and change the colors. Now, like in Photoshop, I have two swatches on the left-hand side. However, this time, they don't relate to the foreground and background colors. They actually refer to the fill and the stroke colors. So at the moment, there's no stroke on this particular bit of text, but there is black, and I don't want it to be black. So I'm going to click this icon here, which actually means none at all. So I've got no fill and no stroke. Right, up to Windows and then down to Appearance. Something a little new to us from Photoshop, so let me do my best to explain it as well as I know it. Here we can change the attributes of the object, or in this case, the text that we have selected. Down the bottom here, you can see I've got two icons. This one here is for adding a new stroke, and this one for a new fill. Now, remember, we've taken them both off already, but I'm gonna create a new fill. Just click on that, and sure enough, there's the fill. Now I have to do it this way, it's a little bit of a quirk, bear with me. I'm gonna change the color just by clicking on the swatch and choosing this blue color. Good. Now I want to add an effects to this. And you can see there's another icon down the bottom here which says effects. This is an icon that as Photoshop users we're already used to, but slightly different this time. If I click on it, you can see we have some Photoshop effects kind of things that we might uh, associate with the filter gallery, actually. Um, uh, but up at the top here, we have some that are illustrator effects, and these are live effects. And the one I'm looking for is actually in stylize, and then scribble. And I get this new dialog box come up, and you can see that my text looks nice and scribbled. Now I can play around with these as much as I like. Let's take this variance down a little bit, perhaps. Um, the stroke width is fine. Curviness, I can make it look all curly and look at that, lovely. Um, and of course you can change the variation of that as well. Um, let's not change the spacing too much, that's a bit silly. Uh, the variation of the spacing, we can get all kinds of effects coming up. Okay, I don't want too much curviness really, just enough so it looks like it's been scribbled on. Easy as that, let's click OK. And now I can as well put on a stroke I'm going to do that and I might want that maybe to be black or blue or whatever it may be. Let's let's try it with blue and maybe make it a little bit bigger. So it looks like it's been scribbled inside a stencil perhaps. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to click the cross here just to close the appearance panel. Right, as easy as that to create the text. So now I'm going to go to edit and copy and then scooch back over to Photoshop and then choose edit and paste. 
And right here, it asks me how I want to paste it down. Well, in the introduction, I said I was going to use smart objects, so that's the one I'm going to choose. But you can see I can also bring it in as pixels, a path, or a shape layer, depending on what you want to do. For me, smart object will work just fine, and I click OK, and here it is. Because it's a smart object, it comes with a bounding box. That means I can bring that up, and I can resize it, should I wish. Of course, pressing the Shift key, I can keep it within the original dimensions. But I'm going to let go of Shift, and then I can just make it exactly as I want it. There we go, up and at them. Good, click the tick. Now that's all very well, looks good, happy with that, um, but really it, I'm being a little bit too British perhaps, and it should be up and at M. So I'm going to double click on my layer here, just as I would with any other smart object, and you can see that it went straight over to Illustrator, opened the document as a vector smart object. Our original is still behind it, I'll close that one off to avoid any more confusion, don't need to save that. But here's my smart object. And I can grab the text tool and come in here. I can just select it, put an apostrophe in there. And then I'm just going to go back to the selection tool there, just so as I'm not selecting anything. There we go. Good. And then I can close that down just like I would with a smart object in Photoshop and click Save. And away we go. Let's go back to Photoshop. And if I just make this active window, there we go, it's updated it. Just as it would with a smart object contained within Photoshop, we can do this with Illustrator as well. As easy as that. Now I can use this as a layer just as I can with any other in Photoshop. I can add a drop shadow and a bevel in emboss and anything else that I like to it. So there we go, using smart objects from Illustrator in Photoshop. I've used this for text, but you can do borders and all kinds of things. And of course, they're all scalable because they're all vector graphics. I'm Eric Reno. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube to get regular updates from TipSquirrel and other places where I do videos for. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.